Let's take a look now at how we might convert between binary, octal, and hexadecimal expansions. So the first thing I want to do is look at a binary number, and I want to write it as an octal expansion and a hexadecimal expansion. So we're going to start with octal, but what I really want to point out to you is we know that octal is base 8, and base 8 is 2 to the third. And we know that hexadecimal is base 16, and 16 is the same as 2 to the fourth. So obviously this is going to come into play as I'm converting these. So I'm just going to rewrite my values, just so we don't get them confused between the two. And so this is going to be my octal expansion. And in an octal expansion, I'm going to start at the right, and I'm going to group things into threes, because again, eight is two to the third. And so I'm going to look at these values in groups of three, but I want to start on the right, and if I end up, like I have here, with a value all by itself, all I'm going to do is add some zeros to make sure that I've got three values. So I like to kind of keep things clean, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this so that I know exactly what I'm dealing with. 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 1, and then 1, 0, 1, and then 0, 1, 1. So what I'm looking at here is four groups of three. And what I want to do is take those four groups of three and turn them into basically octal values. So again, keep in mind when we did this in the other direction that for octal, again, we have three places. So the first place would be two to the zero, which is one. The second place, again, just to the left of that would be two squared, which is four. And the third place, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Go back. The first place is two to the zero, which is one. The second place is two to the first, which is two. And the third place is two squared, which is four. So what I'm looking at here is I am just going to add up zero fours, zero twos, and one one, and that all adds up to one. And then I'm gonna take one four and one two which is 6, plus 1, 1, which is 7, that solution is 7. Then I'm going to take 1, 4, 0, 2's, and 1, 1, which is 5. And then I'm going to take 0, 4's, 1, 2, and 1, 1, which is 3. So as an octal expression, this is 1, 7, 5, 3, base 8. And again, all I did was take these values and um, sort of coordinate them with the three values in my groups of three. That is why we write them as groups of three. So now if we look at hexadecimal expansions, which is obviously base 16, it's going to be so very similar. But remember that hexadecimal is two to the fourth. So I'm going to have four places instead of three. This one's still going to be two to the zero, which is one. This one's going to be two to the first, which is two. This is going to be two squared, which is four. And this is going to be two to the third, which is eight. So now what I want to do is instead of grouping them in groups of three, I'm obviously going to group them in groups of four, which is kind of nice because they're already in groups of four for me. And just as I did before, if I end up with some values that need zeros to the left, then that's what I'm going to do. So now I just have three, so I know I'm going to end up with three values. And again, I'm just going to do the addition. So I have zero eights, zero fours, 1, 2, and 1, 1, which gives me 3. I've got 1, 8, plus 1, 4, which is 12, plus 1, 2, which is 14, plus 0, 1s, so that's 14. 
and then I have 1 8, which is 8, plus 0 4s, which is still 8, plus 1 2, which makes it 10, plus 1 1, which makes it 11. So 3, 14, 11. And then again, I just have to use um, the letters that correspond to each of those. So remember that 11 was the same as B, and 14 was the same as E. So my solution is 3 E B base 16. Now let's take a look at going from a, an octal expansion to both binary and a hexadecimal. So in the previous example, we were going from base 2 to larger bases, 2 to the 3rd and 2 to the 4th, which made it super easy. Now we're actually going in reverse. Remember, octal is 2 to the 3rd, binary is 2 to the 1st. So I'm going from a larger base to a smaller, which is going to make things different than the way we did it before. So previously, I grouped things, and I grouped three things to, to go from binary to octal. Now, each of my octal values is going to represent three, because again, two to the third is going to represent three binary values. So I'm going to rewrite each of these, and I'm going to leave some space in between, because each of these represents three numbers. And again, you can put a line in between them if you need to, to keep them straight. Keep in mind for an octal value, we've got 2 to the 0, let me redo that, 2 to the 0, which is 1, 2 to the 1st, which is 2, and 2 squared, which is 4. So essentially I'm saying how many 4s, 2s, and 1s does it take to come up with 3? So I need 0 4s. 1, 2, and 1, 1, because 2 plus 1 is 3. For 7, I need a 4, a 2, and a 1. And so I'm going to just fill that in over here as well, because it's the same. For 2, I just need 1, 2, and the others are zeros. And for 4, I just need 1, 4, and the others are zeros. Then when I write my final solution, keep in mind I'm going to group these in groups of 4. And I start from the right side. And if I end up with a group of three, you can always add an extra zero. So my solution, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Again, make sure you specify that as base 2. Now, going from octal to hexadecimal, Unfortunately, we would have to do this step anyway, which is why we did it first, because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it twice. So essentially, if I just gave you the second question, you would first have to find the binary and then turn binary into hexadecimal. So let's remember how we went from binary to hexadecimal. We took each of these groups of four. I've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 1011 and 1100. And keep in mind for hexadecimal, just as we did before, that's 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd. So this is 8421. So this is telling me 08s, 04s, 1211. So that's 3. 181412 and 0. So 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. I've got 1, 8, and 1, 2, which is 10, and 1, 1, which is 11. And then an 8 and a 4, which is 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 0. So my solution for hexadecimal expansion is 3. And then instead of 14, I'm, of course, going to write E. Instead of 11, I'm going to write B. And instead of 12, I'm going to write C and again, base 16. Now let's take a look at going from hexadecimal to binary and octal. So looking at the first part of this question, again, I'm going from base 16, which is 2 to the 4th, and I am 
going down to binary, which is two to the first. So in our last example, when we did octal to binary, we said each octal value gave us three binary values. Well, because that was two to the third. Now we have two to the fourth. So each hexadecimal value, whoops, that is an eight, A, eight, D, gives us four values. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just as a reminder, because we're dealing with four values, that's two to the third, two to the second, two to the first, two to the zero. So that's one, two, four, and eight. So essentially I'm asking for A, which is 10, how can I add up to 10? Well, to add up to 10, I would take eight plus two. So that means I need one eight and one two, but I don't need the others. Now, how do I add up to eight? Well, I just need one eight. So I need one eight, but I don't need anything else. And then D is 13. So how do I add to 13? Eight plus four is 12, plus one is 13. So that's one, one, zero, one. So that's all you have to do to go from hexadecimal to binary. So again, I'm just going to write this a little bit cleaner. And that is base two. Now, just as we did on the last example, if this was your only question, that would be, this would still be an intermediate step. So if I asked you to go from hexadecimal to octal, you would have to pass through binary anyway. So now we've already learned this system of how to go from binary to um, octal. So I'm going to start just grouping by threes. So, and I always start on the right. So one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and one zero one and keeping in mind I could always add zeros to the left if necessary but obviously I don't have to here now I'm looking at octal so it's base three so that's four two and one or two squared two to the first two to the zero so now I'm going in the opposite direction I'm saying this is one four plus zero twos plus one one so four plus one is five I've got zero fours, one two, and one zero, so that's just two. Zero fours, zero twos, and a one, which gives me one. And one zero one, we already figured out, was five. Those were the same. And so, what is my final solution? It is five two one five base eight. Let's finish up by taking a look at operations on base n numbers. So you might be asked to find the sum and product of say two base two numbers or base three or base four or base eight, 16. It doesn't matter what the base is, the process is the same. So I'm choosing obviously two binary values to find the sum and product, but it's the same concept no matter what. So if I first want to find the sum of these, what I need to remember is even though it's very tempting to say one plus one is two, keep in mind for binary, my only values are zero and one. So a two is actually one zero. So one plus one is two, but in binary, two is equal to one, two, and zero ones. So I'm going to put the zero here and I'm going to carry the one. And then I'm going to add one plus one plus one, which is three. So remember three would be a two and a one, so 11. So I'm going to put the one here and carry the one. So remember this one goes here and then I carry the one. Now I have one plus zero plus zero, which is one. And then obviously just bring down the one. So the sum is one, 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 zero. Let's do the same for multiplication. So for multiplication, one times one is one. And again, this is just old school multiplication. So I'm taking the one furthest to the right and multiplying it by everything on the top. So times one, one times one is one, one times zero is zero, and one times one is one. Easy enough. Now I'm going to take the 
this one. And I'm going to do the same thing, but remember with multiplication, I'm going to leave that space there because I'm multiplying from the second position. So now I'm multiplying by 1. I get 1, 1, 0, 1. And now, of course, I would take that last value, which is 0. I would have two zeros, and then, of course, I would multiply everything by 0. So that 0 really didn't matter. Now I'm just going to add. So 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. But remember, I'm going to bring the 0 down and carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 2, which is 1, 0. So bring down the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 2, which is 1, 0. So bring down the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 2. So bring down the 0, carry the 1. And then I have a 1. So my solution, again, you should be writing this in the proper format. I can put the two zeros in front if I want to, but I should be grouping in fours, and that would be my product. In the next video, we're going to take a look at algorithms for integer operations.